You know, I echo a lot of what Scotty said. I thought the week of preparation was a good one. I think our guys came back and, and they battled every day and, and prepared well on the practice field. There was great energy in the meeting rooms every morning at 7 o'clock in the morning. There was good energy on, on the practice field. Um, and it just, for some reason, didn't translate Saturday. And I thought, you know, we came out the game. I thought there was good emotion to start the game, um, playing hard. Uh, we're in a close ball game, and then we had some adversity there with the interception, uh, busted coverage defensively that gave up a big play, and and I think our, um, I think there was a doubt, there was doubt at that point, and and something I think the the biggest thing for you know my charge at, at moving forward is to you know get across to these guys that you know everything's not always going to go your way in the in the course of a football game, and. Um, sometimes you're going to have the momentum, but you're going to have to fight like heck to keep it. And sometimes you're going to lose the momentum. And how you respond at those moments is going to be your measurement. That's what you're going to be measured by. And, and you're just going to have to fight like heck to get the momentum back. And, and I didn't love the way we responded. Um, and not from an effort standpoint, by any means. I thought the players played hard to the end. Um, but from an execution standpoint. And what I saw on film on Sunday were Guys trying to do too much, thinking they had to go outside of their responsibilities to make plays to change the game. And, you know, my message to them and showed them examples on both sides of the ball that when we executed, we were okay. Um, but then when we out, went outside of the scheme, we tended to hurt ourselves throughout the game on Saturday. And, and so to trust each other, trust the other 10 guys on the field that they're going to do their job. And, and to do your job and, and trust the coaches that the scheme is going to work if it's executed right. And I think uh, over the next 10 days, that's going to be the major point of my message. And, and that's where we're going to go. That's what we're going to work toward improving as we head into the Kent State game. You guys have so obviously some time here. How much are you focusing <coughs> on yourselves specifically versus you know the typical game plan a, a team's going on? Uh, the way I built the week was Tuesday and Wednesday, We'll get a little bit of work on Kent State, but more on ourselves. A lot of good against good, a lot of fundamental work, um, a lot of individual work, a lot of, you know, when we get to team situations, it'll be more ones versus ones and twos versus twos and kind of go back to camp and, and really work on the fundamentals of the game, the assignments, how we play, not just what we're calling. Um, and then they'll have another day off on Thursday and then Friday will begin a typical game week of preparation. So we'll get a little jump start on Kent State on Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, but more importantly, we'll focus on some of the things that we think we have to improve in ourselves going um, as we head down the road. How do you keep these guys motivated? I mean, there, there's not going to be a bowl game. There's not going to be a MAC championship. How do you keep them motivated to keep playing? Well, thank goodness I haven't had to. Um, and, I, and I'll say that. I mean, there was. A lot of determination in that room last week, um, and there was a lot of determination in that room yesterday when we met. Um, so I don't, I didn't feel like it all had to come from me. Now I think a certain amount of energy has to come from me every day, and they're going to respond to that. But these guys love the game of football, and and I think, you know, when they get to play at this level, um, they've proven that. Um, they're going to go out and they're going to they're going to do their best, and and we got to make sure that they're coached up that, you know, they can put a better performance on the field a week from Tuesday. The last names uh, on the back of the uniform we decided to, to make that change. Can you speak about it a little bit? What you were looking for? You know, we talked a lot about last week. Um, each day, you know, I, I was able to do some research is, you know, that, that Sunday night when I took the job. And, and I felt the most important thing culturally that we have to teach these guys is, is not just wanting to win. I think everybody wants to win and everybody's willing to work toward winning, but what it takes to win uh, in this difficult game. And we had a number of, of different um, points that we covered over, over the course of the week. And, and one of them, was that you know for for a team any organization to be successful everybody's got to feel a sense of worth and one individual is not important than any more important than anybody else and 
the guy who gives you a look on scout team every day is just as important to our success on Saturday as a starting quarterback. And we really hammered that point home and the players kind of responded to that. And so I, I, you know, I approached that with some of the seniors and they, they thought that was a great idea. And you know, it's not going to work miracles. But again, just another way to get, to get that teaching and that culture established here. You looked at film. Did you come up with any reason for the disconnect between the way you practice and the way you play? Again, I, I would say the lack of execution. And I know that's coach speak, and you hear that all the time. But, but again, not an effort thing. And not a, it, it comes down to a lot of times guys trying to do too much and, and trying to force something that isn't there and or not communicating on the back end or, or you know, again and again. And, and we were able to pull examples right off the film and show our guys, okay, here it is when we executed and when everybody was on the same page and everybody was doing what they're supposed to do and that's a successful play. And then here it is where one or two broke script and that's not a successful play. And I think, you know, being able to do that on Sunday and, and really have that time yesterday to do that really opens some eyes in our locker room. And, and hopefully it'll lead to better execution as we head down the road. I think the energy was there. The want to was there. And it was a, a week that we really talked about energy and bringing it every day and, and having really upbeat, up-tempo practices. And we did that. And for a young team or a team that's learning how to win, sometimes they think that that's just going to automatically translate into game day, where I have to get that message across or the teaching across to them that that'll only translate on game day if they approach the game with the same focus and energy that they approached it throughout the week. It's not just going to magically happen. So that's where we are as a football program, and it's my job to make strides in that area. Is that message any different than what these kids have been hearing for the last, the first seven weeks, Coach? We've talked a lot over the first, not just the eighth game, but the first seven about execution, et cetera. A different voice. Um, you know, as far as, you know, I, I, I don't want to really go to that, you know, but, but I, all I can do is look at where we are as a football program, as a football team, and, and see what I need to address and focus on those things, and that's what I'm trying to do. I feel like the pressure is um it was certainly an emotional week you know and i and i um i appreciate that you know and, and i and i understand that that's difficult for a young man um as far as the pressure goes i don't know perhaps but um you know one of the great things you can teach a student athlete throughout his time in the program is how to handle adversity and how to come back and, and how to handle pressure. And those are great teaching moments for our staff. And if that is an issue, then we need to identify it and we need to keep, keep building that aspect of our culture and, and so that it doesn't matter what happens. Um, any adversity we face, because we're going to face adversity in football, in life, in academics, but how we handle that is our measurement as a, as a program, as student athletes, and as coaches. You got more than a week, but what's Andrew Flair's status? Um, still up in the air. You know, it, it's, a, it's an ankle sprain. And, you know, it was a, uh, I was hoping to have him back for Saturday, um, but, you know, he wasn't able to go. He did everything he had to do, and he's continuing to do that. So it's a little up in the air. I'm um, hopeful. Let me just put it that way. Uh, the rest of the guys, guys um, Kyle Jr., Marcus Milton, Labus, they're all the, kind of in the same boat. We've just got to kind of wait and see. Um, but the extra days do give us an opportunity, hopefully, to get healthy before the Kent State game. Do you have any idea on the rest of the offensive line as far as center goes? Um, do you know if Caleb will be back? Yeah, Caleb's back. You know, he played right. Saturday. And, and, you know, one thing, Caleb missed a couple weeks. and. Um, had to get his conditioning back and you know we had a plan for using him and we did and we'll continue to push his reps and and push him back in the lineup um, you know as we see fit and, and as he's able to do yes the uh, Kent State offense is one that you know we've seen here before with Sean Lewis um, 
what do you what do you see about what those guys do and obviously how they're you know working to perfect it? You know, very balanced. Um, you know, I, I'd equate it to going against our offense in the spring. You know, they uh, it all starts with the run game and the RPOs off of it. Um, so, you know, more importantly than any week, you know, you play a team like that, you got to have 11 guys on the field ready to do their job. And if I'm in coverage, I'm in coverage. Run fakes can't affect me because, you know, if you start packing the box, they're going to throw the RPOs. And if you're too loose and just defending the pass, they're going to give it on the run. So we got to have a good plan. Uh, we got to have a good plan to execute our defense. And, and again, most importantly, we have to have discipline where 11 guys are reading their keys, have their eyes in the right place, and defending their aspect of, of that offense.